and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. This is the first episode in the Glaciated Landscapes and Change section of the A-Level Geography Revision series. If you've watched my previous videos you may have seen that I've just finished a tectonic series. Um, if you've not seen it subscribe down below there's a full playlist of them which this will also be in so I'll link that up here for you now. But today we're going to be focusing or starting to focus on the Glaciated Landscapes and Change section of the EdXL specification. However, this is not exclusive to the EdXL specification, I'm just following it because that's what I know, that's what I did at A-level, so I find it easier to kind of go in that way. But I will leave the links to the AQA and the possibly OCR um, specifications down below, so yeah, I'll try and make that as possible and as reachable for you all as well. So without further ado, let's start. This is going to focus on glaciated landscapes and the physical processes and characteristics that change them. However, human activity is also having a great effect on our glaciated landscapes which are threatening their futures. In the last introduction I talked about the inquiry questions. This again is going to be broken down into inquiry questions, the first of which is how has climate change influenced the formation of glaciated landscapes over time? Inquiry question two is going to be what processes operate within glacier systems, so this is going to be more of how a glacier is formed, that kind of thing. Inquiry question three, how do glacial processes contribute to the formation of glaciated landscapes? And number four, so this has an extra one now. How are glaciated landscapes used and managed today? So we'll be looking at each of the glaciated processes, different case studies for example, but we'll also be looking at the players and attitudes and actions throughout this whole thing. So for this first episode, we're going to look at Svalbard. This is our first case study. It is in the Arctic Circle up north. Svalbard is an island off Norway. It is about halfway between Norway and the North Pole, but it is owned by the Norwegians. The Svalbard Islands live in the Arctic Ocean, as well as about 3,500 polar bears. The islands also house around 3,000 people. The name Svalbard actually means cold coasts, although in comparison to some other areas at the same latitude, they're relatively mild. About 60% of Svalbard is covered by ice. There are about 2,000 glaciers and the island Nordsjællandet has a, has a large ice cap, which is the third largest in the world after those covering Greenland and Antarctica. Most of the land is bare rock, like rock, spree, moraine, fluvial deposits, that kind of thing. And only 10% of it is vegetated. Permafrost exists basically everywhere and the islands contain the largest wilderness in Europe. It is also untouched in most places, which is both rugged and fragile. What are the threats to Svalbard? Several human activities pose threats to Svalbard. They include coal mining, specific research and an increase in tourism. Coal mining for example. In the past, whaling and trapping were major economic drivers of the island, but Svalbard also has valuable mineral reserves. However, far little mineral extraction has been taking place apart from coal mining. This is because mining is so difficult in Svalbard due to the extreme cold, long hours of winter darkness and challenging sea conditions after transportation, affecting transportation to overseas markets, as well as the remoteness of the mines themselves. It wasn't until 1899 until the first coal from Svalbard actually reached Norway. Most of the coal mining that takes place takes place in a place called Svea, Svevrugre. I really can't say it. <laughs> I'm not Norwegian, I'm sorry. The Norwegian state-owned coal mining company employs about a third of all workers that work on Svalbard. However, the company is now in economic and political difficulties with job losses and calls from, from environmentalists to stop the coal mining. This would be a disaster for the local community as all of Svalbard's energy comes from the coal that is mined there. Polar scientific research. Svalbard has had a long history of polar scientific research which involves studies of marine ecosystems, geology and meteorology. 
Norway, Russia and Poland all have permanent research stations on Svalbard. A lot of research is focused on analysing atmospheric changes that might be linked to climate change. The Arctic is expected to witness some of the most significant changes in temperature as the impacts on ecosystems and physical systems such as glaciers are of great interest to scientists. Scientific research faces fewer regulations and restrictions than tourism or mining but it does result in environmental damage due to the associated infrastructure such as the construction of research centres and access roads. Tourism. Tourists have been visiting Svalbard for many years usually by ship. However, since the new airport opened in 1975, the tourist numbers have grown significantly. In 2013, 70,000 people visited Longyearbyen, 30,000 of whom were cruise ship passengers. Most people who visit Svalbard explore the natural wildlife, the glaciers, the fjords, and the wildlife such as polar bears, seals, and walruses, or to study the history of the islands. Adventure tourism is also becoming increasingly popular with opportunities for hiking, kayaking and mobile snowmobile safaris. As a result, the, the Longyearbyen has seen a significant growth in tourist facilities such as hotels, shops, restaurants and tour operators. However, increasing the number of tourists as well as helping the local economy also brings problems. These include oil spillages, water discharges from shipping, air pollution from flights and stress on wildlife and fragile environments. Protecting Svalbard. Svalbard's economy does depend on the mining, research and tourism, but they all threaten the, the fragile environment. The Svalbard Environmental Protection Act came into place in 2002 to protect the natural environment, its wilderness, fauna and flora, as well as the island's cultural heritage. Two thirds of Svalbard is now protected through national parks and nature reserves. So that is the first episode of the Glaciation series complete. I hope you learned something, I hope you enjoyed. There is a really interesting documentary that I'll link down below. It's of Gordon Buchanan going to Svalbard to kind of experience the polar bears. He sees them coming out of their den for the first time and he follows them for a few months. It's not directly related, but it is on Svalbard and it is, you can get a bit of a sense of the general environment that's there and it's really cute. We love the polar bears. <laughs> so yeah, that is the end of this video. If you learned something, please leave a like down below, subscribe, and I will see you next Monday.